Hey guys, Coach Becky here, and welcome to in-season workout number two. You'll need a set of moderate weights, whatever that means for you, or if you want to have a couple weights out, that's fine. All right, come on down, and let's start with some mobility work. We're just going to do a kneeling hip flexor stretch. If you want to put a towel or a pillow down underneath that bottom knee, that just might feel more comfortable for you, so that's fine. So we're just going to lean forward until we can feel that pocket stretch, that hip flexor stretch. Nice tall posture, big deep breaths. And let's bring the arms overhead and lean back to stretch out that lower back. Hold here, take some deep breaths. Very good, and let's straighten out that front leg. And now we're gonna stretch out the hamstring, so adjust uh, the bottom leg. If you wanna put your hands on the ground or on a chair in front of you, just find the most comfortable stretch for your hamstrings, lower back and arms. Deep breaths here. Great job. We're gonna rotate the bottom leg internally. So you're kind of like almost sitting on your bottom heel if you can get into that position. And then we're gonna work on pressing our body weight into that front foot. What we want, I rolled up my pants so you could see, is to work the ankle dorsiflexion. So we wanna get the ankle to flex or bend forward as much as possible, stretching out the calves, getting a bonus hip stretch here as well. Kind of a tricky one, but we'll do it on the other side as well. Let's work through that kind of hip, hamstring, low back, and calf sequence again. So starting with the hip flexor stretch. Okay, bring those arms up overhead and tip it back for a lower back stretch. Of course, if you feel anything that's uncomfortable or just even slightly twingy, we want to avoid that. Okay, straighten out that front leg. Stretch out the hamstring, hands on the ground or on a chair in front of you, getting the lower back, hamstrings, arms. Take some big deep breaths here. And we're gonna get into that ankle stretch again. So again, you're gonna rotate that bottom leg inward. So it's almost like you're aiming to sit on your heel, even if you can't sit that low, that's kind of like what you're thinking. And then we're gonna focus on the front ankle, keeping the heel down, pushing the knee forward, using our body weight to stretch out that ankle joint. Definite focus of revitalization today, building resilience and strength without stressing the body. Obviously, if you're in season, you're stressing the body a lot with swimming, biking, running, or all three, or hiking or whatever it is, your multi-sport or endurance background. So I'm just gonna kind of keep gently moving into this workout. This is my favorite way to warm up. It's downward facing dog. So hands on the ground, hips to the sky. And we're just gonna pedal the feet, give those calves another little stretch out. Give the lats a nice stretch. So kind of press your chest down towards the floor, taking some deep breaths, finding where the tight spots are. Drop the hips down, flatten out the toes, pull the shoulders away from your ears, open the chest, upward facing dog with some neck mobility that feels comfortable for you. Curl the toes back underneath and let's hit that one more time, downward facing dog with calf pedals. And we'll do one more set of the upward facing dog as well. You might choose to do this on a rest day or after a big day. I know yesterday I had a really big day so my body feels sore and tight today, so I'm starting my day out with this, just to kind of do a little self-check. Searching out the hips, the neck. So nothing today will be too heavy on my end, and it's all gonna be very kind of resilience and endurance focused. So grab a sip of water. Definitely wanna stay hydrated today, especially if you're feeling really, really sore, just gonna kind of help with your recovery there, so. Uh, a shoulder mobility drill here. So um, you can do this kneeling or standing, thumbs up, and you're gonna rotate the thumbs kind of in each direction as much as you can. It's not just up and down really lazy, it's rotate kind of in both directions. Like challenge yourself to see if you can make a full circle with your thumbs. So we're just, again, kind of like, I always use the analogy of spraying WD-40 as a farm girl, spraying WD-40 into your shoulder joints just to kind of oil them up, keep them functioning really strong and smooth. Obviously really important in the sport that I do, uh, but also just for posture in everyday life. So um, one other little stability 
activation drill before we get started, but split stance position, you can just see shoulder width apart there. We're gonna do 20 of these per side. You're just lifting the heels off the ground, kind of in a running or walking specific form here. So if you're 80 and wanna just stay mobile going up and down stairs, great one for you. If you're 15 and an all-star like cross country runner, great one for you. So switch feet here. It doesn't matter which foot's in front. We're new 20 on each side. Just lift the heels lower, lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, lower. So we'll run specific kind of calf raise. I've done these before or split stance calf raise. Super fun. Kind of like to keep the tempo up to work the calves, but do what feels good for you and ballpark it at 20. Nice little body weight drill there. Awesome possum. All right, we're gonna grab um, one weight here. We're just gonna do a little bonus stability drill before the main set. Level one, keep the back foot on the ground. Level two, lift the back foot and then stand. Level three, which is what I'll be doing, reach to balance, okay? So we're gonna do five repetitions. The weight is in my left hand and I'm balancing on my right foot. Okay, so there's one. Inhale down, really get long, and I'm just trying to line my back foot up with my shoulder. So kind of making that letter T. Going into that kind of run specific or climbing if you're a hiker or walking up and down stairs if you're older. Kind of getting into that specific position. Driving the knee. Can be functional for a lot of different ages and a lot of different sports. So very good. Just going to do one more set on the other side. Again, kind of a stability focus before we start. There's level one. There's level two. And here's level three. You could also do this, I forgot to mention, without weight if you need to. Okay, let's do five. Great time to inhale. Great time to exhale. Stretch that body out while working on stability. Again, balancing on the left, weight in the right hand. Recently came off a pretty severe ankle injury myself, so... Um, definitely working in a lot of balance and stability moves to build trust back up there. So, all right, grab two weights. First exercise of the day is a basic squat to press. This is a demonstration. Okay. Here's what it looks like from the side. Just making sure you've got space above you. You're not going to hit anything. Okay. Lift those weights straight over the shoulder joint. Okay. So make sure you have a weight that's appropriate for you. We're going to do 12 reps. Here we go. Weights at the shoulders, shoulder width apart on the feet. Inhale down, exhale up. Squeeze those biceps to your ears and press those weights directly over your shoulder joint. Not forward, not backwards, not to the side, directly over the shoulder joint. If you don't have great shoulder mobility and you know that, just do weighted front squats and don't risk hurting your lower back or your shoulders by pressing weight overhead. That can be a contraindication for shoulder injuries or people that have poor shoulder mobility. So just do the front squat if you've got a shoulder issue. Okay, so 12 reps, wanted to show you half from the side. Okay, very good. Exercise number two is gonna be a single leg bicep curl. Okay, so level one, just put the leg behind you in split stance to do your curls. Level two, I want you on one leg the entire time for your set of curls, okay? So find a, rate's a weight that's appropriate for you. We're gonna do 10 per side. Regular old curls, here we go. Think tall thoughts. Inhale and exhale with your movement. Find a focal spot. I definitely personally need to work harder on one side now that I've suffered a pretty severe injury, which is my first probably of my entire life, which I've been lucky at 31 to hold that off as long as I have. But those of you out there, you might have several injuries where you've got to really focus at several different joints. So that's okay. Level one, back foot. Level two, on one leg. And we're going to do 10 again. If you feel like you're really struggling with the knee up, go to the split stance position. We don't want to reinforce poor stability. We want to find the modality that's right for you today. All right, great job. That was one round. We're going to go back through those two exercises again before moving on. So we kind of have three of these superset style um, workouts today that we'll go through. Again, nice low squat. Squeeze the biceps to the ear. Slow directly over the shoulders. Think tall thoughts at the top. Think skyscraper 
you'll notice I do all my workouts uh, without shoes on. Um, and that's intentional. You don't have to do that, but I do encourage it if you feel open to it, especially if you're at home. Awesome. Those will get the heart rate up. And we're going to go right into those single leg or split stance. There's level one. There's level two. Bicep curls. Quick breath here. Again, we're working with moderate weights and kind of following endurance protocols. So our rest time is relatively short today, as you notice. So 10 per side. If you've got that knee up, try to really strengthen those hip flexors in a run specific dynamic and keep that knee parallel to the hip if possible. All right, let's do 10 on the other side. Here's level one, here's level two. Great job. Nice and smooth. I'll let you know if I want you to do something rapidly, but we'll save that for primarily what we're doing as our focus sport, whether that's surviving parenthood or a triathlon. <laughs> you can fill in the blank there with how you're using this workout to enhance your activities of daily life or sport. All right, great job on that first superset. Next one, we've got two more exercises now. We're gonna do the hip hinge to a row. So you're gonna hinge at your hips, do a bent over row, and then stand up. Here's what it looks like from the side. Soft knees, hinge at the hips, flat back position, and that's where you'll do your row. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 repetitions at that pace. Kind of break it into four steps. Step one is the hinge. Two is the row, three is the reset, four is the stand. One, two, three, four. Hinge at the knees and hips, row, relax, the arms stand up. One, two, three, and four. Step one's the legs, step two and three is the arms, step four is the legs again. Deadlift, row, relax, and stand really focusing on building strength on the back side of the body, hamstrings, glutes, back, upper back, arms. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Great work. Deadlift, row, relax, and stand. That's one of my favorite moves ever, so love working that one in, especially with some moderate weights when I'm pretty tired, okay? Next is a bridge to chest press. So you're going to drive your hips up towards the sky, feet flat on the floor, chest press, and relax. Let's do that all together. Chest press and glute bridge. We're going to do 15 of these, so find a weight that's appropriate for you. Some of you might want to go heavier for this than you did for the deadlift row, but I'm definitely just keeping everything really moderate today just to kind of, like I've said before, revitalize my body a little bit. So 15 reps. Glute bridge to chest press. Great time to inhale. Great time to exhale. Good one for the glutes, hamstrings, your core, your chest, and your bicep muscles. Fantastic. And we're just going to do those two uh, again, that superset again. Get some water. Again, we do want to incorporate a, a few 30-second rest intervals here because I'm going to get you through this whole set in 20 minutes. So it's super efficient. Stay hydrated. That's going to help your body just feel better. So back to our deadlift rows. Here we go. So we're going to start with number one right here. You're going to hinge at the hips, row, and then stand up. In that front view, you can really see how flat of a back position we get into. Um, if you're newer to deadlifts, I should have mentioned this first, but you could also do this with just like a broomstick or a PVC stick if you're worried about straining your lower back. It's meant to strengthen your back, but not primarily use your back muscles, if that makes sense. Your primary movers are actually your hamstrings and your glutes. And then on that row, it's definitely the arms and the upper back. So keep that belly button nice and tight, pulled in towards your spine. Great total body movement here. I like to use the analogy, I could serve coffee off of your back if you're doing a deadlift on my watch and that's what I used to, <laughs> to teach my swim team kids obviously loading the spine is important especially if you ride an arrow but we'll get into that later on in my in-season workout so more to come there let's get into our 15 bridge to chest press inhale and exhale great uh another great kind of lower and upper body combo move that I like so this set here is probably my favorite of today's 
And we'll just have one more super set after this. So you're already over halfway through your workout. So nice job, you guys. Hardest part is usually getting started. And I always start with some nice stretches. So it's easy to get into these workouts. Okay, fantastic work. We're going to move on uh, to our final superset. So you're just going to hold one weight. I'm going to put that pad back down on the knee. Um, if you are using a more traditional dumbbell, I'll use that in the second set. But you can just hold it by the sides if you'd like or by the head, whatever works. Okay, I've got two handles on mine. And now this is all about stacking the shoulder and hip and knee joint while bending and straightening at the elbow. So we're really working triceps in the half kneeling position. So this is a half kneeling triceps extension overhead. Really the elbow joint is where everything's happening here to strengthen those triceps. Really important in throwing sports as well as in swimming in the follow through phase. Okay, and that's worked. We're just doing 10 aside. I forgot to mention that there, but that's 10 aside half kneeling triceps overhead. So this is the other side now. Doesn't matter which side you start on. Great work. Okay, and then we're gonna move on to a plank with an overhead reach. Here's level one, kneeling, and you're just gonna reach overhead. Okay, keep the hips flat. Level two, you'll be in a full plank, definitely working. I try to mi mimic a really small space for those of you that are using an apartment, but that's what a f the level two is. So keep the hips flat and we're just working core stability with overhead extension. And we're going to do 12 total, which is six per side. Okay. So forearm plank kneeling or full, keep the hips as flat as you can as you reach overhead. If you are a swimmer, you can kind of think of this in your freestyle, like, catch and pull phase so if you wanted to even add like resistance band ropes in and kind of make it your own um that's been common as a dry land exercise so just wanted to offer that little variation there okay so super quick that's not a super long endurance core exercise what have you but if you're really active or peaking in your season that's fine you're not really necessarily building endurance here it's kind of like tuning it up for the other stuff so just a sidebar there but here we go, and we're back to our triceps per side, 10 aside. Here's using a more traditional dumbbell for those of you that aren't familiar with the power block weights that I'm using. Just wanted to give you a demonstration there. So again, this entire in-season series is really meant to obviously give you a good workout, touch every muscle group, functional, core, strength, stability, all that. Um, but this is also meant to kind of build you up to keep you strong for other things, whether that's marathon running or Ironman training or 10K open water swimming, whatever you're working on. At Parenthood, that's the ultimate marathon of life, you know, just to kind of not drain your energy in this in a nutshell. So give you a good workout without completely like bringing you down for the day. So, all right, back to those plank with overhead reaches. This is actually a great workout to do an hour before you go to bed um, if you need it, just to kind of like the day got away from you and you just have 20 minutes and it's, you know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock at night. Great one to do. All right, so great job on the triceps and that plank reach. We're going to do a hamstring stretch for about 20 seconds. So take some big deep breaths here. And then we are going to do a quick 10 second V-sit hold just to kind of give that core one final squeeze. Not super challenging, um, but enough to kind of give you one more little push. So you're going to lean back, toes straight, arms straight, pull the shoulder blades back. You'll kind of see me do that. Open up the chest. Great job. And we're just going to do that one more round. So this is our final thing for the day. Just want to congratulate you on getting the workout in, joining me today. And lean back, nice and strong. Take some deep breaths. You're right at the end now. So I wish you well, whether that's, you know, this is it for you today. If you have other things on the docket, stay strong. Thanks for joining me. And just remember, no matter what obstacles you face, you guys, you can overcome them. Okay, so... 
hang in there with me. Let's have a great season. Join me again next week for in-season workout number three. Have a great day.